Over the past nearly 30 years, I've built and upgraded hundreds of PCs for people, and of the thousands of components I've installed or replaced, there's one that's the most terrifying for the vast majority of clients to change in any way. I'll tell you what it is and why it isn't actually that scary to upgrade. Let's do this. Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ and some of you may recognize this. This is the gaming PC I built and pimped out for my son and it's a mid-range gaming PC or at least it was four years ago and it was perfect for my kiddo for both doing school online last year and for gaming which primarily consisted of Minecraft and Rocket League. But now that he's starting to get into the more newer AAA titles, it is starting to get a little long in the tooth. Now, to be clear, the RX 580 and the 7th gen 4 core Intel CPU is still perfectly capable of running Warzone, which is his current game of choice. The main problem is that there's no wired internet connection in his room or on that entire side of the house. And for internet, he's just been using this USB Wi-Fi dongle, which is not a good solution for online gaming. So my plan was to just install an internal PCIe Wi-Fi 6 card for it, which would be just as fast and reliable as a wired connection on my home network. But strangely enough, I don't have a Wi-Fi card on hand, but I do have motherboards with Wi-Fi already built in. In fact, I have a lot of high-end components just sitting on shelves. I'm not trying to flex. It's my job, these are just the tools of my trade, but it's kind of ridiculous that they just sit here until I need them for some benchmark comparison or other video projects. So I figure I'd just put some of this stuff to good use and upgrade his PC for him. And by upgrade, I mean build him an entirely new PC. So this video is a little different than my normal PC build videos where I take you through the build step by step, explaining it along the way. Nope, this build is complete, or almost complete. See, last week I was doing a lot of battery use testing on my framework laptop, which just involved starting a stopwatch and letting the computer run. In all, I had like 12 hours and nothing to do but watch a clock tick down. So, I built this. But I did pull out my cell phone and film some of it, so I'll let that run while I explain the pieces and parts I used for the build and why I picked them is easy because I had them and I'm probably not going to need any or most of them in the very near future for other projects. I would have done some things differently if not. The core of the system is a Ryzen 7 5700G for the CPU and a Gigabyte RX 5700 Gaming OC graphics card, which has actually been flashed with the 5700 XT vBIOS. 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3600MHz memory on an ASUS ROG Strix B550F Gaming Wi-Fi motherboard. So all of those parts are things I bought myself. The rest of the parts are things like review units that were sent to me by various companies. They sent a component. I did a review video and then it goes on the shelf. So why not highlight some of the things that performed well in my testing? And I'll start with the power supply because this I think is the only component that I haven't done a dedicated review video on. This is the Be Quiet Pure Power 11 FM 750 watt 80 plus gold rated PSU and Be Quiet just reached out and said they had a new line of power supplies and asked if I wanted to check one out and maybe use it in the system build. Of course I do. Be Quiet is probably one of the most respected companies out there and their products are top notch. I've actually had this PSU in a test system under load 24 seven for just over a month now and pulling a continuous 60 to 80% load, it's been reliable, virtually silent and barely gets warm. So. There's my unsponsored plug for Be Quiet. I'm not supposed to have favorites in my line of work, but I've been building PCs a lot longer than I've been reviewing them on YouTube, and you know, I'm human. So great power supply with plenty of juice to power the system. 
Next is another company I have a lot of respect for, Fractal Design, and I went with their Meshify 2 Compact. I said everything I needed to say in my review video of this case, and not only is it a crime to keep this thing boxed up in storage, but it's also kind of cool that my kiddo's rig will be a mini version of my rig. I did replace the Fractal case fans with these Ago AR12 Pro fans because they're pretty quiet, provide good airflow, and have that RGB that every 12 to 30 something year old wants in their gaming PC. Finally and weirdly, the hardest decision I had to make was the cooler. I have a lot of both really good air coolers and AIOs, but since I was going with an 8 core 16 thread CPU, I decided to go the AIO route and although I criticized the price tag of this AORUS Water Force 240, it did perform the best of all my AIOs. And although I'm not very fond of the Aorus engine controlling my fan curve, it'll work great for my son as he'll be able to switch his fan curves right from his operating system and not have to get into the UEFI to do that. And again, RGB, so you know, that'll increase performance by like 10%, right? Okay, so the only thing I haven't covered is storage. Now, this PC had a 256 gigabyte SATA SSD boot drive and a one terabyte 2.5 inch hard drive for his game library. I'll be upgrading this in the new PC with a 500 gigabyte WD Black NVMe SSD boot drive and a two terabyte 3.5 inch hard drive for his game library. Now, my advice is always when building a new PC or replacing a drive is to do a fresh operating system install. Install the latest drivers and reinstall any software you need. But this is by far the biggest sticking point for the vast majority of people. For one reason or another, they don't want to start from scratch. They either have their system set up exactly how they want it and don't want to redo all that, or they may have games or software they didn't necessarily legitimately acquire that they can't reacquire. No judgment, I mean, I'm not endorsing that, but I'm not judging. I've encountered legacy software installs that can't be reinstalled. I've even had someone that didn't want to reinstall Chrome because they didn't know any of their username and passwords for websites because it was all just saved in their browser. There are ways to import all of this onto a new drive, but users are just paranoid at the prospect of losing data or configurations. In my son's case, he's not paranoid. He was actually at school when I did all this and didn't even know it was happening, but I know he has a lot of Minecraft mods on here, and he's done a lot of custom Minecraft modding and scripting himself, and to be honest, I don't know a lot about that, so I'm gonna do what I do for everyone who wants to keep their drive as is. I'm gonna clone this old boot drive onto this new SSD. Now, I've done this before on the channel when I upgraded my wife's laptop and there I used a live Linux USB to clone the Windows drive. This time, I'm also gonna use a Linux-based utility to clone the drive, but this time it's Clonezilla, which as the name implies, was purpose-built to clone drives. Once the drive's cloned, I'll take you through a couple more steps to clean up the drive and ensure it's working properly on the new system. First, drive installation, and I already have the NVMe SSD installed in the M.2 slot in the motherboard, and I'll just attach this old boot drive to a SATA power and SATA data cable that's connected to the motherboard. One note, to save some time and not clone trash, be sure to clean up your drive before you clone it, like run disk cleanup, delete temporary files, browser cache, and empty the recycle bin. Now, let's get Clonezilla downloaded and set up. Clonezilla is a free and open source utility you can get at clonezilla.org. Click the Clonezilla Live link at the bottom of the page, select the current stable Debian-based version, select AMD64 for the CPU architecture, ISO for the file type, and Auto Repository, and click Download. To create the bootable USB flash drive, we'll need to download and install Valencia Etcher. Launch Etcher, click Flash from File, and select the Clonezilla ISO file you downloaded. The target is your USB flash drive, and then click Flash. Once the drive is flashed, 
Restart the PC. Many motherboards will default to a bootable USB if installed. If not, enter your UEFI and select the USB as your boot option. Clonezilla will launch. Select your language and keyboard and start Clonezilla. Now select device to device, beginner mode, and as we're cloning an entire disk, select local disk to local disk. Select the source disk or the disk we want to clone, and the target disk we'll be cloning too. I'm cloning a healthy drive, so I'll skip disk checking. However, if your source drive is damaged or corrupt in some way, you can choose to have Clonezilla attempt to repair it. Finally, select shut down when complete. Clonezilla will then clone the drive and you'll be able to track its progress. Once the cloning process is complete, you can remove the original drive and restart the computer. The first thing you should do if cloning to a larger drive is open Windows Disk Management and extend the data partition into the unallocated space. All right, now I've already had this old drive running in this PC for about a week now before I just did that cloning. So it's been all set up to work on this system. However, after you do that clone, when you boot up the new PC for the first time, you're essentially using a boot drive from a different PC. So you'll typically get the setup system devices notice as Windows detects the new hardware it's running on and sets up the drivers for it. And Windows does a pretty good job at this on its own, but what it typically doesn't do is delete the old user installed drivers. For example, any motherboard chipset drivers or audio or network drivers, I say downloaded from the manufacturer's website of the old motherboard and components and installed are still installed and could lead to conflicts. So in many cases, if you still have the installation package, you can run it and select the uninstall option. If not, you can go to add and remove programs and in many cases, find the driver package you no longer need and uninstall them. There are third party applications that can do this for you, but I haven't vetted any of them. So I can't make an informed recommendation on any of those with the exception of display driver uninstaller. Now for this system, I just upgraded to another AMD graphics card. So the drivers are the same. However, if I was going from an Nvidia or even something like Intel integrated graphics, I could boot into safe mode, run DDU, select the display driver I want to uninstall, let it do its thing, restart and install the new driver. And now my son has a brand new gaming PC, but with a very familiar operating system setup. I mean, the desktop background and icons are even the same. Now, the storage drive is easy. It's just a single data partition, no boot sectors or recovery partitions to deal with. So I'll just copy all of the data from this old drive to the new one. It'll take some time, but still faster than re-downloading all that in games. So I guess the only thing left to do is see how Kiddo reacted to his new PC. What are you looking for? What are you looking for? Computer. It's right there. What? It's right there. <laughs> no, it's not my computer. That's it's not? You don't want it? I know, it's cool. But oh. it's not the same one. No, no. Nothing in that computer is the same as what was in your old one. That's a whole brand new computer. I don't think that one's going to have any problem running Modern Warfare or <laughs> Battlefield 2042. Yeah. That's cool. Well, I figured I'd put them all together and make you a new gaming computer. Oh, thank you. <laughs>